Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now, it's time for talk. For some time, we have been interested in making some sort of a record of things that go on in Dunklin County, especially in this Boot Hill area. We've been thinking in terms of a video history, but how to put that together and how to make it interesting. We have uh, collected a lot of material. We've gone to the museum and uh, copied a lot of pictures. We've read a lot of history books. But it appears to us that in this roll of tapes behind me, we have volumes of interviews with people, some of them who have lived all of their life in this Boot Hill area, who have lived 60, 70, 80, 90 years and more in this Boot Hill area and have seen vast changes come about. And to tap that resource, we think, is an interesting experiment. So we're going to attempt to do that in the weeks and months ahead as we uh, go into our 12th year. We did an interesting interview. We've done uh, many, of course, uh, with Kennett citizens. We've done several with the Sena citizens. And we have also found someone in the Hornersville area who is 90 and is a lifelong resident of Hornersville. And she has the most interesting uh, recollection of some of the things that have gone on, some things that amazed me to, to learn about th and, and to see pictures that she has. We thought you'd be interested in seeing a portion of what we did as we attempt to collect this bit of history. So let's show you now portions of the interview we did with Josie Langdon in Hornersville. We're going to talk about history today. We are visiting down in Hornersville. Hornersville probably was the first town to be laid out in Dunklin County, even though Kennett uh, has a reputation for perhaps being the oldest due to an Indian settlement, but we are talking with a delightful lady here. Mrs. Josie Langdon, who it was Mrs. Center Langdon, invited us into her home. She's 90 years old, and she has seen a lot of changes and a lot of history go by, um, and she's agreed to talk with us. We're going to look at some uh, older pictures, and we're perhaps going to go out and uh, see where some of the original roads were. We're just going to learn all we can about the south end of the county. Um, Ms. Langdon, thank you for letting us come in and bother you this afternoon. Uh, tell me, as a, as a young girl, what this land looked like around the Hornersville area. Well, this was a farm here. It was all... Old farmland? And have, what about, what about water? Was there? Water everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. And was it... And, and uh, frogs galore. Would, would the water stay up around the house, or was this a high, dry daub? Well, we lived down next to the river. Oh, okay. On the main street of Hornersville in the old Horner house. Okay, on the old in the old Horner, the gentleman the who oldest, laid down Hornersville, the old oldest house in town, and it was right down on the river. Oh, yes. Now, are there still houses down on yes. the river? All right. Do you remember things like uh, going to mill to grist mill? Oh yes, <coughs> we played all over down the front street, you know, as kids growing up, and we had a certain distance we could go out in the boat, you know, the river came way up almost to our house before the ditches were dug. Okay, now what river are we talking about? Little River. Little River. All right. So that's where the Little River Drainage District, yes. that's, and that has changed things up here in Hornersville, oh, right? Yes. You see, we have four ditches, the five now, that's drained all this country, you see. And, uh, oh, it was a fisherman and a hunter paradise. Do you remember any, do you remember seeing lots of game or lots of people oh, come down? they shipped it out of here. They shipped it. We, did they buy it? Did they take yes, the hides and... Uh, they took the hides, bought hides, sent his grandfather, bought hides at his store, and the other merchants here did. And, uh, oh, they trapped, and they, sh they had a boat dock, or a fish dock, they called it. 
And the fishermen would bring their fish in, their ducks, turtles, and all kinds of game that they caught or hunted then. And there would be people who would want to <coughs> buy the turtles? Uh, for oh, yes. Um, Did you ever cook turtle? Oh, yes. Oh, you have? Ms. Beckhart that lived on the lake when we were growing up, they were, um, my father worked in a store and they come up to shop from the big lake. And uh, she would send us a gallon bucket of duck giblets and send us a gallon bucket of turtle legs. Legs. Is there a lot? I just like chicken. There's not a lot of meat on it. <laughs> I was starting to say. It, but it's I good. Can... It tastes just like chicken. Turtle legs. Yes. Now, there's a delicacy that you have never heard of since. <laughs> I have never even had frog legs now. And my father used to bring in a gunny sack, a tow sack full. Go out frogging at night, you know. And, and bring in a gunny sack full yeah, of frogs. Frog. We had um, businessmen from St. Louis come here and go down on the lake. And the Beckhart, Jim Beckhart, kept them, you know. In sort of a lodge or he a hunter's... A, um... He had boat houses, or a big enough place to have several at a time. Uh, boat houses, you mean floating, floating yeah. boat houses? And they would, uh, they would rent one of those? They, they bought some land and they used to live on the water all the time in a boathouse. And then they bought some land down around Geneva, that's out where that government thing is now, close to it. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Bryan is 100 and will be 102 over at Zenith, the Beckhart's daughter. And so Mr. Beckhart would guide these men, you know, and I guess he had others. All right, now you talked about um, some of your relatives uh, uh, building a pole road. Would you tell me about that? That Senator's grandfather, Langdon, built this pole road. To okay, ship. now what was his name? What was his? E.J. E.J. Edwin Langdon. James. Built a pole road? From Cotton Plant to the river, Mississippi River. Okay, and, and the purpose was what? To transport? To transport his cotton over there and put it on boats to take it to St. Louis. All right. Uh, did many other people use that road or well, could any? I'm sure. Anybody that wanted to travel, you know, from the land here, that's called Grand Prairie at Cotton Plant. Okay. Grand Prairie, and that's what they named the gin when Cinder and Ab went in the gin business. What about Indian mounds? Were you aware of a lot? Were there in those days a yeah. lot of Indian mounds? Well, I think more so than now, you see. They've been... Leveled off. Leveled off. Of course, the still one up there, you know, was yes. Grandfather Langdon's first home. He had a home on that mound. Now, you have a, a connection with the Consolvings. Well, and you my have a, a aunt married Dr. Consolving, her right. third husband. Okay, all right. And um, you have a picture that we're going to be interested in looking at. Maybe you could identify the people on there. And in the background is Little River, right? Yes. Uh, before before the drainage ditches before were cut. Before the drainage ditches. They had started them up north, north of Hornersville, before that picture was made. But that's still... All right, do I remember hearing something about, did there used to be big celebrations? Did the whole town turn out and go down on the river for certain holidays? And oh, yes. We had people come here from all around, wagon loads and all, you know, and pick, go on picnics down to uh, an island on the lake. All right, now, when you say lake, lake <clears throat> what are you big calling lake? lake? Big, big lake. lake. All right, now, now that's down in Arkansas near Manila. It would hold, oh, it go three or four families, and they had a barge to take care of the the fish and the, the beard, the whatever, the ice and everything. We always made ice cream and 
kind of thing and had sodas for the children. Okay, all right. So it would be just a big uh, all-day-long all event. All-day event. Uh, when families would gather. Yes, May the 17th, 1917. And uh, it was down at my aunt Josie Consolvin's house. Now this is right on the river. Right. Yeah. Okay, now we're yeah. looking right here at, at Little River before yeah. any of these drainage ditches yeah. were cut. This is my father, Walter Ruffin, and that's my daughter, Dorothy Langdon Timmons, and that's George Quinn, his cousin, and that's his wife, Minnie Quinn, and Lucille, and that's Harry Shepard, and Ethel Shepard, Ethel Bone Shepherd, his wife, and that is my brother Sanford, and that Sanford Ruffin, <coughs> and that's Dr. Consolvin, this is my Aunt Jo, that's my brother Earl Ruffin, and that's me holding Edwin, why I didn't get over here, I don't know. <laughs> but that's Margaret Ruffin, Walker, she lives at Farmington. That's my brother Anderson Ruffin. That's my mother. There's Lida Ruffin and Bond Ruffin. Okay. Lida Douglas she is now, Miss Price Douglas at uh -huh. and Bond Ruffin. All right, now what the, What are we looking at here? This, what? Uh, this was their carbide plant that furnished lights for the house. That's like the hunters used on their headlights to hunt frogs and... Mm. Okay, and, and what did you say this yeah. type of a thing was here? I guess it's a vent. Okay. All right, now, yeah. Dr. Consolvin, it's reported that he was into a lot of different... He must have been a very... Uh, he was uh, a very smart man. He was, and he was into uh, all sorts of experimental... Uh, experimental farming and different things. Very okay. smart. But Dr. Anderson was a smart doctor to her other husband. I never knew, of course, Dr. Eagle. All right, we're, we're looking at um, uh, one of the older pictures that Ms. Langdon has here. Now tell me what's going on. Is this down on the river? That is on the river front, right down at the edge of the river. Okay. Little now, river. Now what's the occasion with everybody down here? Sunday in afternoon. Something to do on Sunday afternoon. Okay, so they're all... No, all the women, women are, are all dressed up. Okay, but now this one has a, is that a donkey? Yeah. It's a donkey pulling that, uh, It's a donkey. Donkey? to that buggy. Okay, and a, uh, and a goat, and a little goat wagon that the youngsters are riding yeah, in. Yeah, my brothers. This was not really a mode of transportation at this time. You all had... Oh, we had, well, everybody had a team, had a horse and buggy that mm -hmm. had transportation. My folks never had any, just walked to their business and back, you know. Mm -hmm. My Tell me who who's in this picture. This is Cinder Langdon. Your husband. My husband, and this is Josie Ruffin. Which we, is you. Which is me. Okay. <laughs> this is me, she should have said. <laughs> we had rented a surrey that day and drove down to Beckhart's place on the river. The man who had all the boats. And the made duck calls out of walnut logs out of the river. And uh, we went down and spent the day and had dinner with them. And we went out in a boat. He took me for a boat ride. At one time, Hornersville was quite a, quite a, a, a boom town, almost, you would always say. Oh, yes. Well, the river, you know. The river <clears throat> traffic made it. Yes. I know. We used to put up ice. Used to put up river. ice. Had an ice house down on the river, close to where that picture was made. Okay, now, do you mean you'd cut the ice from the river that froze? Um, yes. And do what with over it? And they'd put it in a house with sawdust. See, we had the sawmill, and they got the sawdust and kept the ice. That was their ice before we had an ice maker. Uh, Just a little bit of a glimpse into history. We found it extremely interesting, and we hope you have enjoyed it, too. You have been watching Time for Talk. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. 
Each evening, Monday through Friday at this time, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. If you are aware of items of interest, please let us know for possible airing on this program. Time for Talk is brought to you through the cooperation of Kennett Cable Vision Incorporated and is produced through the facilities of the Slicer Street Church. The Holy Scriptures come alive. Coming up next, stay tuned.